Okay, Nick, uh, let's go in here and kind of see how uh, the feaster corn is holding up to the rootworm pressure that we have here this year. Okay, this looks like a pretty good spot. Yep, let's go in here and as you can see, they don't move. The thing you guys want to really notice is the brace roots that are coming out here. I mean, this thing is, is anchored really well into the soil. Look at the huge root mass that you. is, you know, all just connected here. And that's why Nick said we got to take it back and wash off the dirt to really uh, show you, you know, how much roots are underneath of this, uh, of this Functional. plant. There we go. I think we got a pretty good representation. So let's take this out of here. Okay. And, uh, we almost got a football hanging there. Uh, I'm glad you're uh, good, strong here this morning. So. Okay. Okay, Nick, here we got a competitor's corn, and we're just a mile and a quarter down from the other field that we looked at that had the feaster corn in it. And so there's not much rainfall difference, and this is also five years corn on corn. Everything has been treated identical other than the seed that's planted here. So let's uh, see what the difference is. Well, we definitely got a problem. The field looks clean, but we've got some really short corn in here. This is a competitor's corn, and you can see the height difference. It's only you know shoulder high on me, so roughly five foot tall. But the other thing is, most of these stalks did not pollinate. Okay, so there is actually no ear even developing on these stalks, uh, which is probably one of the main reasons is the lack of roots. So if you actually shake the the plant or actually move it sideways, you can tell you know the root development is. Uh, not nearly what uh, what we had on the other field. Wow, it's really severely pruned. Pulled right out with one hand. I think what I'll do is I'll see if I can't dig one of these. My gosh, there's so much feeding here, it's unreal. Each one of these plants, you can uh, go down the row and just pull them out with one hand. Yeah. And uh, we should not be able to do that. We've got about four roots feeding this plant of a nodule system. And it's unbelievable as dry it is that this plant is even hanging on at this point. But as you can see, we've already got goosenecking, which is just going to get worse. And if there's, we don't get a rain, but if we get some moisture, hopefully we'll be able to fill this air out, what's, what's there. And the kernel depth is already starting to tip back. With the, the amount of roots there, I look for a shallow kernel, probably light test weight. Your hybrid here versus the competitors, you know, what's the per bag, you know, investment uh, that basically we paid here versus what we did here? Was our cost savings here? I mean, or what, you know, what did we spend to get this versus uh, the competitors? Even if we it was thirty dollars a bag difference at th at three bushels, a uh, three acres per bag, and say we're spending ten dollars an acre, yes, for for uh, protection it's unbelievable the payback that we're getting. Yeah, and, and in today's world where we've got almost $8 corn, so it's just a little over a bushel an acre, you know, to get the extra protection. Here. Exactly. But, you know, when we go to next year, it's gonna be pretty easy to talk to the neighbors and a lot of the future prospects that had problems because when it rains, we will see this. This is probably won't even be harvestable. So that's gonna be a total loss a total loss, and you guys, when you started this, you were projecting, you were shooting for 200 bushel corn. Yes. Okay, that particular hybrid, it still had potential for 150 or more if we get some moisture. Yes. Okay, we're waiting for that. These guys are pretty much over the hill. 